السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his slave and final messenger May the finest peace and blessings be upon him uh, Joined with me in uh, our Cairo studios is our Sheikh, our Ustad Omar uh, Welcome Brother Omar once again Jazakallah khair Honor to have you and always a pleasure to it's, be with you It's my pleasure, Jazakallah khair, Barakallah khair May Allah bless you, Jazakallah khair Alhamdulillah, dear viewers, uh, we're continuing our series of qualities of being a successful Muslims Alhamdulillah, this is episode number four And we are do delving into and diving into how to be a visionary Muslim it's always good to have aspirations and inspirations and have higher goals. But what does it mean to be a visionary Muslims? And with that, we'll turn to the Sheikh and see his uh, advice to us here today. Sheikh, what does it mean to be a visionary Muslim? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Firstly, Muslims uh, should always be uh, planners. Muslims should always be people who have a vision. Uh, people who are always concerned about their self-development, people who always have uh, goals and are striving to achieve them. Uh, they are people who have strong determination and strong will to, to achieve that. Yeah. Now, vision, linguistically, it means to visualize something, to see something. Mm. And it is to see something in, in the future. And also vision is it's a belief. Mm -hmm. It's something that you truly believe in. Uh, it could be a dream. It's, it could be a world that you wish to see, um, a change that you wish to see in society in the future. Mm. So it's a vague definition, but I think uh, it gives an understanding of what this word means. Vision comes from the eyesight mm -hmm. originally, uh, but it is an idea. It, is an, uh, it could forecast. be an imagination, a forecast. Foresight. For sight, absolutely. Yes. Um, so many people might have a vision of what they wish to see the world or how they wish to see the world, in particular in the future. Mm. So uh, a visionary Muslim is out to set the world or ha should have a view on how he should set the world? Is that? Yes. However, it depends how big a person's vision is. Okay. So a person can have a small vision and focus in one city, one area. He wishes to see a change in his area. Another person's vision is, is global, is much bigger. He wishes to see a change in the whole world. So his vision becomes uh, bigger, mean, meaning the work is more, and also meaning he's going to have to work with other people as well to make sure he gets the vision. Um, one of the uh, authorities and, and scholars of leadership studies, he said that anyone's vision that is achieved by himself, that vision is not big enough. It's a small vision, meaning uh, if you have a big vision, you need to work with other people, you need to cooperate, you need to have a team and, and so on. Mm. As a group, not individually. Absolutely. Um, th but how does having a vision um, maybe inter interfere or is it consistent with relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. Radatillah, like the will of Allah versus our foresight. How does how do how do they how do we connect it? Yes. So okay, when we say uh, vision, uh, even the prophets they had a vision, and they also had their trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, so two things we mentioned. Firstly, the vision uh, of every believer it should be one, mm. and that vision that we all should share is that we all want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is pleased with us. We all want to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all want to live in paradise and we all want to save ourselves from, from the punishment. Mm -hmm. That should be every single person's vision. No. 
And that vision is built upon knowing his purpose in life. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Mankind and jinn have not been created except for the purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. However, there is another vision, like a, a smaller layer, a smaller vision that each individual can have that will be his token to achieving his higher vision. Mm. So a smaller vision as an individual, it could be the person uh, has, has a cause, right, that he, he is trying to um, follow, right? It could be youth work, it could be fighting poverty, it could be fighting injustice. This is his cause. But this cause is for the sake of Allah, is for the sake of the higher vision, which is to enter paradise and to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kind of like uh, having a long-term goal and a short-term goal, or maybe a five-year plan and a ten-year plan, so that sort yeah, of thing? So we, do, we, we, we always have to split up the vision. So the greater vision is paradise. Then we have the worldly vision. No. What am I going to do in my life to meet that vision? Mm. Then we have these milestones that you mentioned. So what am I going to do for the next ten years? Then what am I going to do for the, uh, for the next five years? Next year, next few months? Each uh, smaller plan is to fulfill the, the bigger plan. Mm. But to answer your question, does it contradict with the tawakkul of Allah putting our trust in Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala? The Prophet ﷺ answered this so question. True. That when the companion said that, sh you know, we would know our d um, if, if our destiny is already planned, mm. then, uh, you know, should we still do the actions? Or so the Prophet ﷺ said, I'melu. Do the actions. Mm. Every single person will be guided to his path, mm. will be guided to what he is best for, will be guided to maybe his position. So what we learn is that, yes, Allah knows what we are going to become. Mm. Allah knows what type of uh, legacies we're going to leave behind. Allah knows what actions and so on we're going to do. But we don't. Mm. We don't. And Allah is just. So in order for us to have a just accountability, we need to experience it. We need to do the actions. Mm. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, He will make that path easy for you. Mm. So for example, um, a person's cause, uh, you know, a person wants to uh, be a doctor. Okay. But that path doesn't become easy for him. Mm -hmm. You know, he tries and tries and doesn't work. Then he ends up becoming... Uh, a solicitor or he ends up becoming a businessman and, it, and, and he becomes really successful you know, mm. and it becomes really easy for him you know any tijara he does he, he, he becomes successful in it. Mm. that's because Allah is guiding him to that this is what Allah wants from him no. you've been created for this you've been created to be a businessman the other person has been created to be a sheikh mm. another person has been created for for a different position, and this is how the Sahaba were. Some were warriors, some were scholars. So, is it kind of like a proof for us uh, as well uh, that you know predestination is already there, the will of Allah is there, but this is and we're doing to prove it to ourselves or Absolutely. be a witness for us, whether it for us or against us, I guess. Absolutely. So all of all of these actions will be a witness for us or against us. All of these uh, blessings, all of these um, matters that become close to us and become easy for us, they become a witness either for us or against us. We'll be asked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about every action. Mm. Um, let's see, uh, what are the characteristics of a Muslim visionary? Characteristics of a, a, a visionary Muslim. First and foremost, uh, we should identify that every single one of us is special mm. in their own way. Every single one of us have certain qualities, certain blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each person will have something unique. You know, you will have something that I don't have. Mm. I might have something that someone else doesn't have. That person has something that another person doesn't have. So every, every single person is blessed in his own way. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا لِإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ We have created insan in the best form. He has the best capabilities, best features. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمُ He has taught man that which he did not know. Okay, So every single one of us has uh, some, some 
advantages already set from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. To answer your question is, how do we define a visionary Muslim? Uh, a visionary Muslim has four things. He plans, he has determination, um, he has self-evaluation, he constantly evaluates his progress, his success, and he has uh, positivity as well as belief and conviction of uh, what he is doing. You know, he, he believes in his cause, he is convinced that this is uh, the right cause, this is what I want to work for, this is what I believe is, is extremely important, the mm -hmm. most important perhaps. Let's take let's take it, uh, those four characteristics and kind of slow down a bit uh, because the point of this is to develop ourselves and our viewers and uh, inshallah the ummah at large uh, to be visionaries, right? So let's take these four uh, characteristics and kind of break them down maybe with an example mm -hmm. each step of the process sure. how we can so we can better understand how we can attain that level of visionary. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, as for a person who, who plans, you know, the, the, the famous quote says, if you fail to plan, then you plan yeah, to fail. Yeah. And I think it's true. You know, anyone who doesn't have a plan, um, he doesn't know where he's going. You know, he, he is planning without him planning to the for plan failure. Is failure. Yeah. Um, and um, planning um, is, is, is an important quality for, for a visionary mm -hmm. uh, Muslim. So the Japanese uh, nation, they went through a uh, big war, the Second World War, and their country was like uh, nearly, uh, nearly finished, you can say, mm -hmm. there was nothing happening. But they managed to rebuild their country. They managed to make it today one of the top 10 countries, economically speaking. So how did they, how did they do that? One of the ways was, was planning. Mm. planning. And the Japanese, they became like an authority, you can say now, when it comes to, uh, you know, the study of, of advancement and development and leadership and management and so on. So they say that um, a person who, who has a vision, but no plan, no actions, he's daydreaming. Mm, wasting time. He's wasting time. This, this vision is not real mm. until he has the plan and he has the actions to execute that plan. Mm. But a person who has actions with no vision, it's a nightmare. It's not a daydream, it's a nightmare. It's worse, you know, to be living a life without a vision in the, in, in the first place. You don't know where you're going. It's like you get into your car and you start driving. You don't know where you're going. Where exactly. you, like, you're just going to keep driving and aimlessly, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, Amaru, unfortunately, we uh, would like to take a small break uh, sure. and come back continuing these four characteristics as they are very important. Uh, dear viewers, inshallah, stay tuned after this short break as we will continue on the characteristics of being a visionary. Bi-idhnillah ta'ala, stay tuned. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a wa qalban khashi'a Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome back uh, from our short break. Uh, continuing the lessons or uh, uh, pointers on how to build uh, the characteristics of a visionary in ourselves in order to further develop ourselves and the ummah at large. Uh, Sheikh Omar, we, uh, we're continuing with the first characteristics, the characteristics of planning. Uh, and before I let you just take the lead, if you can just shed some light on uh, our heritage, uh, you know, on how the Prophet وسلم, was a visionary, uh, maybe through, you know, inspiring someone or he, he himself on how he planned, uh, for example, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, our heritage, our religion is full of uh, lessons when it comes to, you know, being productive, being good planners, being visionary, and even doing uh, a job with, with, with perfection. Right, so even the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, amala ahadakum amalan mm. Indeed, Allah loves whenever one of you does an action that He does it with with perfection. No. And this is uh, when it comes to worldly and non-worldly matters. That when someone prays, he prays with perfection. 
When someone does business, he does it with perfection. And in order for us to be successful, one of the ways to perfect something is to plan. Yeah. Is to plan. If you want to do itqan, don't just rush something, no planning. You have a plan behind it. You have something that is guiding you and you are, you are following it. This is itqan. This is per perfecting something. Yeah. And when you look at the life of the Prophet وسلم, uh, you will find that he was extremely visionary. The Prophet yes. he said that he wants to be the Prophet with the most followers on the Day of Judgment. Yeah. This is a vision. You know, he could have been a person who said, okay, Allah made me a messenger. A few people became Muslim, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and a few others. I did my job. I did uh, tabliq of the deen and the risalah. I can just rest now. Mm. The Prophet ﷺ wanted mankind to know about this message. He wanted to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has the most followers. And this vision, it didn't come to existence at his time even. It came after. No. And this is why our vision, it shouldn't be just limited to our time even. Mm. It should be even extended to, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years. That this, this vision uh, is, is, is big and also it gives us sadaqa jariya. Uh, and, and benefits us until the Day of Judgment. Let me just branch off just a little bit. We'll sure. come back to planning and the, the rest of the characteristics. What is mm. the correlation between planning and legacy, if there is one? Uh, you know, you mentioned that the Prophet's vision didn't stop at after his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but Allah his legacy continued after mm. that. So what is the correlation or the relationship over here between legacy and, and, planning. and planning? So a person who has pl a plan, he will have aims. Mm. Right, and a person who who aims, you know, to to reach the moon. Let's say, right. My my aim is to reach the moon. Mm. Okay, whatever is below that becomes second, becomes third. So because his vision is bigger, his aims are bigger. He's going to achieve, you know, higher. He's going to meet higher goals. Mm. Um, and and uh, this is why the Prophet Salam didn't right. aim just for Quraysh, he aimed for mankind. Mm. And even if you don't get 100% of the, the, of the aim or 100% of the plan wasn't fulfilled, but 80% is still very good. No. Because without the plan, you have 0% anyway. Mm. So 80% is still very big. You know, I aim to cross the sea. If I'm aiming to cross the sea and I, I swim for a few hours and uh, I didn't go that far, I'm going to feel like a failure maybe. Mm. But if my aim was restricted a bit, I, I, the aim was a bit smaller. You okay. probably would have done less. I probably would have done less, reached less. So this is, this is, this is the, um, the connection, I think, between planning how big is your vision, and it should be something that is realistic, you know, something that is achievable, um, but at the same time, it's, it's not small. We should, you know, mm. the Prophet ﷺ said, if you make dua so for Jannah, you make dua for the Akhirah, do Jannah al Firdaus, make dua for Jannah al Firdaus. Always yeah. aim for the highest as, as Muslims. Yeah. Uh, also, an off like branch or off mm -hmm. like not off topic, but can a vision live after? I mean, obviously, the vision of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam outlived him. Mm -hmm. uh, but for us, for mm -hmm. me, for you, for our viewers, uh, can our vision outlive us? Yes, yes. I mean, lots of uh, visionary people didn't see the results of their vision. Okay, there were many Islamic scholars who, um, you know, they wrote about ideas. They wrote about certain topics and it was only 60, 70 years after. After their death, it happened, you know. Mm. Uh, we had even from, from non-Muslims, you know, people who, who had, you know, uh, the civil rights movement in America. Malcolm X, for Malcolm example. X, um, Martin Luther King, yes. right? They had a dream, they had a vision, okay? and. But at their time, when they passed away, there was still lack of uh, black people's rights. Mm. Today, you know, the, the, t what, uh, the, the, the rights that people have today is much better than in the 60s, 50s, due and that Due to time. their vision. Due to their vision. Mm. So, likewise, a person should always have a, a vision that is big, and he might not see it in his life, but it will happen one day. So, Islamic Relief or another charity, they would say, my vi our vision is to see a world without poverty. Mm. A world without poverty. Now, this might not happen at their time, okay? But it makes them have no limits. They said a world, not a country. So they'll go all over the world. Mm. They'll work with anyone who would help them fulfill this vision to, to fight poverty. Yeah. Um, we believe in a world 
where every person is educated. We believe in a world where every Muslim youth is proud of his identity. No. Meaning your job is, ne is never done. Okay, if, if it was a, a, a world where 10 people uh, are proud of their Muslim identity, you know, I can finish that job, we can finish it in a day or two, yeah. a week, then khalas, our job's over. So it doesn't have to be at your time. Mm. In fact, if it carries on after your time, that, that's better. That's your sadaqa jari, your mm. ongoing charity. Zakumullah khair for that. Uh, so going back now, uh, we want to, inshallah, by the end of this episode, be able to finish the four characteristics of being a visionary so we can take mm -hmm. it, implement it, uh, inshallah, in our lives. So number one was planning. Mm -hmm. Number two, we said was? So after planning, we said um, determination. No. Persia has uh, determination and we said uh, being uh, positive as well, a person being positive. Um, so I wanted to speak about um, determination, okay? Um, it's important that we are productive, mm. yeah, that we, uh, you know, anything that Allah makes an oath about, it means it's very important. And Allah says, mm. by the time. So time is precious. Time is our main mustard. Time is our main source of trading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. It's more valuable than money. Once your time goes, your life goes. Can I make it back up? So, you know the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he inform, informed us that the most productive time is after Fajr. Mm. And he made dua to Allah, Oh Allah, bless my ummah in the morning. So you will find that a person uh, who is up early, he achieves more. Mm. And there was a study uh, by some scientists that shows when is the most productive time that uh, makes the brain very active and they found that it's in the morning in particular after Fajr subhanAllah another uh, study shows that most successful people they have three of these qualities in common the first one is they sleep early and they wake up early mm. number two is they're positive and number three they have a clear vision and three qualities that failures have in common they sleep late and they wake up late. They are negative and they have a lack of clarity of their vision. Allah. Now what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? Waja'anna layla libasa. Waja'anna nahara ma'asha. Night is being made dark so that we can rest. It's dark and it's quiet. Our bodies, our brains, our eyesight is designed to rest at that time. Wan nahara ma'asha. The daytime is bright, noisy. Why? Because it, it, it's our bodies are designed and our brains are designed to work, to be active. Mm. Mm. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke about Salat even Salat al-Fajr. The one who wakes up for Salat al-Fajr. What happens to that person? فَأَصْبَحَ نَشِيطًا طَيِّبِ النَّفْسِ mm. When a person wakes up for Fajr, he wakes up for the whole day, نَشِيط, active, productive. His soul, his body, his mentality is so tayyib, feels so positive and good. But the person who misses Fajr, yeah, He wakes up with a negative soul, negative mentality and lazy for the oh. whole day. Even if he slept for 10, 12 hours, mm. he missed Fajr, he has uh, no blessing in, in his day. So look at the Sunnah of the Prophet If Allah we just follow it, we will be more visionary and more productive and we will transform uh, our lives. So number one was planning, number two is productivity. I want to try inshallah to catch these next two and we only have probably two minutes at this point inshallah. So, so a minute for each characteristic no. and how we could implement to wrap up the episode inshallah. No. So number one was planning, number two was productivity and number three is Determination. 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 A person should should have a strong determination and should believe in the, the, the qualities that Allah gave him and should not have anything that will be a barrier. Okay, so one of the ways, one of the, the barriers is fear. You're afraid to do something. Mm. You believe you can't do something. You want to stay in your comfort zone. Mm. And sometimes we're even afraid of opportunities. Nobody likes change. Nobody wants to change. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it, absolutely. Yeah. So you will find in animals like the, the chameleon, that lizard, the 
camouflage lizard. Yes. It's safe in its tree. It doesn't want to move. And it's camouflage, so it's mm -hmm. protected. Predators can't eat it. But if he sees a be better tree, a bigger one, it will go to it. It will mm. jump for that opportunity. Mm. But if there's no other tree, no, I'll stay safe. Mm. So, again, I'll go back to the Japanese. They say, if he can do it, then I can do it. Mm. If this person can do it, then I can definitely do it. And if no one has done it before in this world, I shall be the first person to do it. Wow. So this, this is determination, self-belief, positivity. Uh, another person, he heard this quote, who's the opposite, you know, he, he said... Negative. Yeah, he's not, he's not Japanese, I don't know, I don't want to mention a country or anything. Mm. <laughs> so he said, if he can do it, let him do it. If he can do it, let him do it then. And if no one has done it before in this world, then how on earth am I meant to do it? Ustadna, I'm really sorry to cut you off. If you could just repeat the four real quick. Unfortunately, we have to end the episode at this moment. Uh, the four uh, characteristics of being a visionary real quick, inshallah. Being a good planner. Determination. Being productive. And the last one is? <laughs> <laughs> the last one is? Bismillah. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina. You said self-accountability, self right? Self-accountability. Self Jazakum Allah khayran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wait in your scales of good deeds. Allahumma Amen. Ameen. Dear viewers, uh, unfortunately, we have to cut this episode at this moment, at this time. Inshallah, keep uh, tuning in with us uh, in our series of qualities of a successful Muslim. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh.